Glory, 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 hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you the salt of the earth? Are you preparing for war? Are you in the battle? Because if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. Amen? Turn to 1 John chapter 5. As we train for rain. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 1. Oh, thank you, Master. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Whoever believes, what's the word believe mean? Follow. To follow. Whoever believes that Jesus is the anointed one and his anointing, Christ, is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. His commandments are a representation of commands. The Bible is the commands of God. When God speaks, it's a command. It's not an if or but. It is. Verse 3, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments or his commands. And his commandments are not burdensome. In other words, he'll never give you more than you can handle. Anything that's more than you can handle is from the devil. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? <clears throat> but he who believes that Jesus is the what? The Son of God. Again, in this it says, those who follow Jesus as the anointed one, they are born of God. Again, we've got to stop looking at Jesus according to the natural realm. We must look at him as the anointed one. And the price that he paid, he exchanged the anointing for me and you. He released the anointing by the Spirit of God. Who really is Jesus? He's not only God incarnate in the physical, amen? But he is the breath of God in the physical, known as the Holy Spirit. Who impregnated Mary? The Holy Spirit. It was the breath of God Almighty. One day we will truly find and understand the true reality of God himself. I don't think that we could handle it right now. I think that we'd explode. <laughs> so in this, those who follow Jesus as the anointed one is born of God. These are positioned in the spirit of the kingdom these individuals are positioned in the spirit of the kingdom. And they're loving and living as kingdom patriots. Everyone say kingdom patriot. There's patriots and there's citizens. Not every citizen is a patriot. Does everybody get it? Not every citizen is a warrior. Not every citizen is a soldier. Though there should be. They should be soldiers and patriots and warriors. The problem, they haven't reached that level. Amen? <laughs> oh, glory. And these are individuals keeping God's word of commands. They are not burdensome by this position because they are connected by faith to his presence, power, and truth. And they are able to overcome the influences of their past and the evil world. Again, you will hear me talk more and more about connection, 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 because there's too many disconnected. 
Again, I share about the vision I had about the boundaries that God sets. And when the enemy tries to do it, and everyone has a, in other words, like there's an extension cord from you. You're plugged into power, right? And what the enemy tries to do is cause you to step over the boundary that, he, that the Lord has placed. If you step over the boundary, you get unplugged. And now you begin to live out of your memory of knowledge out of the head and not the heart. See, the enemy draws you over so that you become a man pleaser instead of a God pleaser. Knowing what to do, you ignore it. Does everybody understand that? See, there's a place of knowing or ignoring. I mean, knowing or ignoring. Amen? So in this place, it's, it's you, look at, you knowing the dangers, people begin to ignore them. And you know what? Sometimes many people know the spirit but ignore the fruit. So this is what the enemy tries to do. He tries to get you emotionally moved. He tries to get you, how many of you all know fear is an emotion? So he tries to move us by fear. How about losing something? People freak out when they're losing something sometimes. When they're supposed to let it go when God says to. So many times people, by the enemy drawing these individuals who know the truth, but they ignore it. Because they're allowing their emotion, their feelings, dictate their decisions. So now they're going over the boundaries. One step over the boundary, unplug you. Where there's a boundary that's extension as far as you can go. You step over, you are unplugged, you are now in your own strength, your own ability, and the memories of the things of God are in your carnal mind, your, your mind, instead of in your spirit. So now people are living out of the head and not out of the spirit. Is everybody okay? Acts 17. How many of you know that's dangerous? How many of you all know that when you get close to that boundary, there's a warning that begins to come from God? But because the emotional state of being, the soulish state of being is overtaking, and that person steps over the boundary and doesn't even know it. Doesn't even know it. And is living out of the head. And has become a man pleaser. That's one of the sure signs because you know what to do but you ignore it. Knowing that you are pleasing a man instead of the Lord. Does everybody understand that? Acts 17. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are what? Very religious. Perceive that you are, have a form of godliness, but you are ignorant to the truth. It was very simple. That's what he was saying. <laughs> For as I was passing through the con and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it since he is Lord of heaven and earth does not dwell in temples made with hands nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives to all life breath and all things. He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in hope that they may, might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his what? 
his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of what? Ignorance. <laughs> God overlooked, but now he what? Commands all men everywhere to what? Repent, turn. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Very powerful. In other words, Paul was saying, look, first of all, it talks about in the beginning, as Paul was irritated. He was provoked in his spirit because of what he saw. He saw false worship. He saw people having a form of godliness, but denying the power of Christ. He saw that they were ignorant of the truth, and it provoked him and irritated him. So he stood up. In this, they perceived that they had a form of godliness, but they were ignorant of the truth, and they were living outside of the boundaries. They were living outside of the timing of the will of God. Being disconnected to his presence, power, and truth, they were relying on their head knowledge and self-imposed talents and abilities. They were living a life of personal reverence. That means pride. What and what they knew. They were living a life of personal reverence called pride. When the requirement was true repentance, humility, and reconnecting as a partaker of his divine nature. Knowing the dangers of disconnect, people ignore it. And it is dangerous to be disconnected. Many people, look, if there isn't a, anybody who's been baptized in the Holy Spirit knows. They know. But they ignore it. Because to fulfill their own soulish desire. 2 Corinthians 5. Did you ever go out to purchase something? And man, that emotional desire popped up and you said, man, I really want this. But I know it's not God's time. I know it doesn't fall into God's time. But what the heck? I'll step out in blind faith like a moron. <laughs> what an idiot we became. <laughs> it's with that card that looks beautiful. Or you're trying to please someone. And they're trying to convince you to buy something, right? Oh, okay. But you know you shouldn't, but you do it anyways to become a man pleaser. You know what happens? You got unplugged. Hello. Verse 9, 2 Corinthians 5, 9. Hallelujah. Therefore we make it our what? Our aim, whether present or ab absent, to be well-pleasing to him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror, knowing therefore, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are well known to God and I also trust are well known in your consciences. We make it our desire and focus to be well-pleasing to him, knowing the danger that awaits us and if we get disconnected, and also knowing the danger that lies before us without him. Amen? Titus 3. Knowing the danger, but ignoring the danger. Knowing the will, but ignoring the will. Knowing the timing, but ignoring the timing. 
knowing God's desire, but ignoring God's desire. Titus 3. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 1. Knowing the dangers of taking that one drink. Knowing the dangers of taking that one hit, but ignoring them. It's because a person got disconnected already. Already stepped over the boundaries. What do you have to do? Repent, get back as quick as possible, and get replugged in. Because that's where the enemy has access. That's why God sets boundaries in our life. You know, the enemy always tries to utilize your past and the things that we should have done. And the things that we've done, people we hurt. If you've repented of it, it's under the blood. God doesn't see it anymore. Amen? But the enemy sees it, and so is your old man. So he tries to get you in a position to where you try to fix it. If you try to fix it, it is a ploy to step over the boundary and get unplugged. Does everybody understand that? Everything must be directed by the Lord. If he hasn't said it, then don't do it. And God never interrupts himself. So when he's given you something to do already and there's an interruption, you know it ain't God. Amen. Verse 1. Remind them to be what? Subject to rulers and authorities to obey and be ready for every good work. To speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various loves and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another, arrogant and gullible. <laughs> but when the kindness and the love of our God and Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit when he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, his plan, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to what? Affirm constantly that those who have believed or followed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men, but avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonition, knowing that what? Such a person is warped and sinning being self-condemned. Wow. So we must be careful to maintain good works, knowing <laughs> or ignoring, and knowing that we can become a person that is warped in sinning ourselves. No one, no one is distant enough from that. It only takes one decision, one wrong decision, to step over that boundary and become warped in the mind and sinning. It doesn't take much at all. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. James chapter 1. It's amazing how many times people are fighting for what they believe in when they're on the other side of the boundary. Let me tell you, when you're disconnected, you may fight for what you believe in, but it isn't God's will or God's timing. That's where deception is. Remember, anything beyond that boundary is deception. 
That's where the enemy lurks and waits. He draws you to come over the boundary. Then he tears you. And people don't even know it. And their dullness comes. Compromise comes. Complacency comes. And then fear comes. All kinds of fear. James 1.19. Let's speak it. So then, my beloved, let everyone be what? Swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be what? Doers, not ignorers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Listen, if anyone thinks that he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is what? Is useless. Knowing or ignoring. To do is to know. To forget is to ignore. When you see forget, it's because they ignore it. Does everybody get it? To forget is to ignore to do is to know. So you are doing because you know you're doing the right thing. But when you forget that, you are ignoring it. 1 Timothy 4. Many times an individual begin to change course when they step over the boundary because they've ignored the danger and the warning, warnings, knowing what they are, but they ignored them. You know, one of the things the Lord says is, return to your first love and your first works. When a person steps over the boundaries, their first works and first love begin, becomes compromised. Verse 1, let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your what? Is everybody there? Oh. I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> did, I first, did I say First Timothy? I guess I didn't turn the page yet. Woohoo. First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1. Now... The Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Remember, faith is the connection, right? So these deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons are to influence individuals to step over the boundaries and get disconnected. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Knowing the danger and ignoring the warnings. That's what he's talking about right here. What happens? They were ignoring it. Listen, the word of God is telling us all the time. So if you're not refreshing yourself in the word, how can you re be renewed in the warnings? Amen? Knowing the danger and ignoring the warnings. 1 Corinthians 6. You know it or you ignore it.
1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Is everybody there? Let's speak. Do you not know that unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God? I think people sometimes have a tendency to ignore that. <laughs> do not be deceived. How many all know deception is ignorance? Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. There it is. That's a warning. Don't ignore it. And anyone who proves of those things will not inherit the kingdom of God also. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for me, but I will, all things are not helpful. All things are not lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of what? Anything. Anything. Knowing the danger and ignoring the warning. Many people still doing it. 1 Corinthians 15. You know, the word tells us the enemy has traps and snares for us that he lays all day long. He's looking to bring me and you into deception. He first must get us to the boundaries. Once over the boundary, we are disconnected. And deception begins to take over. Then we do all kinds of goofy stuff. There's a, tri there's a new trinity beyond the boundary. It's called me, myself, and I. Amen. It replaces the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Verse 32. Verse 15, 32. Instead of all about him, it's all about me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First, uh, First Corinthians fifteen thirty-two. Is everybody there? If in the manner of men I have fought with beasts of Ephesus, what advantage is it to me? If the dead do not rise, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. <laughs> do not be what deceived. Evil accompanied what? Corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Whoa. Now again, people are still associated with people that are disconnected. Somebody get that? You associate with people that are disconnected. You know what's going to do? Draw you to a place of disconnect. Because that individual is trying to get you to please them. That's how the enemy operates. Instead of pleasing God. Ignoring the warning while knowing the truth. Galatians 6. Does so when you are involved in deception, it promotes ignoring. That's its purpose. Deception is to cause an individual to ignore the truth and righteousness. Verse 7, do not be what? Deceived. And if you're in a state of deception, are you ignoring the truth? Yes. Yes. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever man sows, he's going to also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. That is a warning. Does everybody get it? Amen. Then he gives us an additional to the warning so we don't fall into ignoring. He says, let us not grow what? 
weary. If you don't go weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. So the enemy is trying to bring discouragement, isn't he? Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to, the, to those who are the household of faith. We can either know the warning or ignore the warning here. Again, he tells us something important. Growing weary. You know, when you become weak, the enemy attacks twice as hard. When you become tired, he attacks twice as hard. In fact, when the attack is there, it seems like you just can't get out of it because people are drained. That, that attack is constantly draining. Look at when you are you're over the boundary, there is an area where oppression comes. And you can't tell you're oppressed. The only thing you can tell is you just can't be awake. It's hard to be awake, alert. Does everybody understand that? Because of the disconnect. Why? Because if you're plugged in, you're empowered, you're energized. Amen? What do you think sickness does to us? It tries to unplug us, doesn't it? It tries us to go over the boundaries where people to go seek and chase doctors instead of the king. Amen? Then they put their hope and their strength in medication and in doctors instead of the Lord. Not saying that you can't use medication. But it should never be your life. Amen. Oh, if I don't take this, I'm going to die. No, if you don't, take, if you don't get connected, you're going to die. Amen. Medication, vitamins, all of those things are not your life. He is your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 2. You know, one of the things the enemy tries to do in his deception, we begin to ignore priorities. Amen? See, people begin to ignore the priorities. They know what the priority is, but they begin to compromise it and allow that shift to come. It's just a little shift. It isn't a holy one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 2, verse 1. Therefore you are, what? Inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge, for whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge, practice the what? Same thing. You're asking for trouble. But we know that judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness and forbearance, long-suffering, not knowing the goodness of God, leads you to what? Repentance. True repentance. True repentance. There is a true repentance and there's a repentance because you got caught. There's a false repentance to gain. But there's a true repentance. Do you know when true repentance comes, an individual doesn't care what anybody thinks. He just wants to get connected again. But according with your what? Verse 5. Hardness and your impenitent, impenitent, impenitent heart you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath, revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those by uh, patient continuance in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, they can expect tribulation and anguish on every soul of a man who does evil. 
of the Jew first and also on the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and to also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. No partiality. Now, how many of God will grant somebody more favor than another? Amen. Because favor is earned. Trust is earned. That favor just, in that favor means that that person is a steward that God can trust. Amen. That's all it is. That's what favor is. Knowing the danger and ignoring the warning. 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. Again, we are in perilous times, but we're going to start at verse 10. I, I, I'm actually so baffled of the lack of the desire of justice and righteousness in the human race. I, I, I'm just baffled of the lack where people are so possessed and taken control of in the mind where the Trinity is manifested in their life of me, myself, and I. Unable to submit, unable to surrender. Having a form of godliness but denying the power battling and fighting for what they believe in when it's not according to God's time, his will, or his truth. But they're fighting and promoting deception. It, it just baffles me. In a, in a human race where we were created out of love from above, not out of the lust of the earth, that there's so much wicked and evil and so much evil influence and so easily influenced and so easily swayed, even believers, so easily swayed to step over the boundary, so easily, so taken up by the emotional arena. When they know that the only three true emotions you and I have is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, those are the three emotions that come from above. Anything else does not come from above. Knowing that but ignoring it, amen, cause people to fall into traps. Romans chapter 2, no, where am I at? 2 Timothy 3.10, thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody there? But you have carefully what? Follow my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in Antioch at Icheum and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So you can't ignore that, can you? you should, we should know it. But the enemy comes when we go through trials and tribulations and tries to convince us we're the only one. But, ever, but evil men and imposters will what? Grow worse and worse and worse and worse. Deceiving and what? Being deceived. This is what the word says. It's going to get worse and it is getting worse. That's why we can see it in, in, in human mankind. But you must do what? You must do what? You must do what? Continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, let's read it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man or woman of God may be what? Complete and thoroughly equipped for every good 
work. Wow. Evil men and imposters will become more influential and they'll become worse. They'll be deceiving because they're deceived themselves. We can't ignore it. We must know this and be prepared for this. We can't compromise it. One thing you don't want to do is pet evil. It will always bite you. James chapter 4. James 4, starting at verse 1. Let's speak it together. And where do wars and fight come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace or plan. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? He will what? Flee from you. Submit to resist the devil, knowing the danger. Amen? Knowing the danger, we submit. God resists the proud. Why? Because the proud are ignorant. It puts a person in an ignoring state of being when they are prideful. But the humble are not in that state of being. They're in a knowing state of being. Does everybody understand that? Because there's a difference. Pride is a fruit of ignorance. It's when they stepped off over the boundary. Pride comes in and begins to take over. So they will begin to ignore things, won't they? But when a person is submitting, he's able to resist the push of the enemy and bring them over the boundary. That's why submission is essential. If you can't submit, you can't resist. Amen? It's impossible. And you are submitting to the truth, not ignoring the truth. You're submitting to the warnings, not ignoring the warnings. 1 Peter 5. In verse 5, likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. For he care, casting your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be what? Sober, which is alert, be vigilant, which means consistent, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. And may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you what? Suffer. How many of y'all love to suffer? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yes, because suffering is going to establish something, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to perfect you, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen and amen and amen. Knowing the spirits, ignoring the fruits will always bring danger. Amen? Knowing the spirits and ignoring the fruits will always bring danger. Always. Hebrews 10. Hebrew.
People fight more in the soulish arena than they do in the spirit. <coughs> Hebrews 10.19 Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us, through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, a full assurance of your connection, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Stir up love and good works. How? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Again, many people ignore the warning of lack of assembling. They ignore the danger of not assembling. They ignore it. Why? Because it says it stirs us up. We get fresh rhema. And they wonder why things happen. And they're uncertain and they live in confusion. Because by lack of assembling will easily disconnect an individual. Because the enemy's, it says he's a, devouring. He can outwit anyone. I don't care if your tongue's speaking, you can get outwitted in the second without the anointing. And the anointing comes by assembling. I can't make it assembling one day a week. No way. The attacks are intense. We have to connect every single day but we've got to have strong worship at least three times a week. I know I do. Other than that, and the devil's in the house. <laughs> and my wife might say it's me, you know. <laughs> First John chapter 2, verse 24. <laughs> Praise God. Again, when you get that over that boundary, there's an exchange of Trinity. First John 2, 24. Let's speak it. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is a promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. Put you in an ignoring position. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Knowing it or ignoring it? Knowing the danger or ignoring the danger? We cannot fall into that place. We cannot be swayed. It is a time for standing firm and strong in the power of his might. Avoiding compromise. Avoiding deception and misleading. Avoiding the emotional takeover. That's what the enemy tries to do. He come, tries to come in with an emotional takeover. And a man pleases man instead of man pleasing God. That fight is before us all the time. Remember, we don't fight flesh and blood. We fight voices. Amen? 
voices of influence. They carry an emotion and a desire. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your warning. And we will not ignore your warning. We ask tonight, Lord, that that impartation would be a stirring and a preparation to each and every one of us. That we may see. Because you let us know, Lord, that we may see it coming. That we may discern the fruit of it and not ignore it. And that we will depart from evil and not promote evil, but expose evil. So that your kingdom, your government, and your will will be established in us and through us for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.